Welcome back to Conscious Living Lab. I'm Patrice. I'm Luke. So today we're on the topic of health again. So in our recent video on how to create a vibrant health, we've talked about uh, the subject on what are the main steps for you to get there. If you haven't seen that video, just click on the link. So to recap those three steps, they are... Stop the poisoning, firstly. Secondly, nourish your body with everything it needs to run well. And thirdly, is to detox. So over the coming weeks, we're gonna basically explore and develop on all the subjects. And lots of actionable steps that you can take to start improving your health today. So let's dive deeper into stage one, stop the poisoning. So what do we mean by stop the poisoning? Well, literally, we just need to be aware today that there are more toxins than ever impacting us in our environment, in everything. There are 85,000 approved toxins in the US and Europe and the rest of the world are not far behind. So those chemicals show up in our water, in our air and in our food. And so it's pretty clear that we need to look at how we can limit those toxins, limit that exposure so that we can actually create health. And for second point, uh, something that we recently discovered as well is that uh, the dose make the poison is not as true anymore because toxic chemicals present as little as part per billion in our bodies could actually affect our endocrine system, our nervous system in ways that we actually never saw before. So those new chemicals mainly in plastics and other uh, pesticides and things like that really change everything in the way our body evolve and mainly for kids the way it really triggers the the body when it's in full building time so the dose does not make the poison meaning that even if it's a very low exposure then it still can have a very detrimental impact on your body so really the place to start when you talk about stopping the poisoning is food what are we putting into our bodies it's the obvious place to start um, there's lots of things now that say you know we, we dig our graves with our teeth and um, you know most diseases start on our plate and pretty much that's true because if you're eating toxic food then you're really changing um, your body we know from epigenetics that our genes were, were born with a certain number of genes but it's actually our gene expression that is most important. And we know now through all of the studies in epigenetics that our gene expression is influenced by our thoughts, by uh, our food. And so, our environment. It's really all what affects our environment and our bodies that make those gene express in many, many different ways. So if you think about it, your food can either be creating your health or it can be creating your disease. So after all that heavy talk, let's get back to some very simple rules. If it's processed, you can be sure that it's loaded with chemicals. Read the label. If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. As simple as that. We don't have the time to go through all of the chemicals that are in food and to tell you about all the all the hidden truths that the food industry doesn't want you to know about there's tons of great resources already that exist there are documentaries and books um, and we've made a list of these on our website so you can find the link under this video what we do want to do is talk about and highlight some of the major toxins so some of the culprits that are really ubiquitous they're everywhere in your processed food today yeah let's start with sugar sugar is that thing that if you haven't slept in a cave for the last 20 years you know that it's not really the best thing for you but when we say sugar we are only scratching the surface of looking at it like if you look at sugar you can put them on a large scale there is the healthy sugars that come from fruits see i put you on the healthy side you may sweetie <laughs> and then there is the very toxic ones that are those uh, sweeteners artificial sweeteners and you got all gradients in between on this side you got the, the fruits and the, their sugar is always attached with fibers your body exactly knows what to do with it it did that for many many thousand years after you got refined sugar the problem with refined sugar is that to have 100 gram of sugar 
you need to eat a full cane of sugar cane. And on the other end of the scale, you got all the artificial sweeteners like aspartame, NutraSweet, Splenda, and high fructose corn syrup. All those are highly toxic and detrimental to our bodies. So they're neurotoxic and they're carcinogenic, and they're contained in any soft drinks, um, juices, product, lots of products that, that are processed. So you need to be really careful and look at the labels. So sweet is okay if it's nature's sweeties, like just eat fruits when you want something sweet and get away all the other things. The other thing you can do is there are tons of healthy sources of sugar. So, you know, rather than rather than having processed foods with these with these toxic sugars, you can um, substitute for stevia, um, honey, maple syrup, um, agave, and another one I'd, I like is xylitol, which comes from the birch tree. Very low glycemic in index on, yeah. on xylitol. So you have lots of options. The other big culprit that we see a lot in our foods now, it's everywhere, is MSG, monosodium glutamate. The problem is the glutamate, that's the nasty component. It's found in everything from ketchup to ready meals, to crisps, to sodas, like everything. And Asian food is also re renowned for having MSG, high MSG content. <laughs> I know, it's sad. The more you know, I know you go down the rabbit hole. It's, um, yeah, it can be tough. But what is MSG and why is it so bad? So let's think about, about it in terms of what it does to you. So MSG is an excitotoxin. It's been shown now by science to destroy brain cells by literally exciting them to death. So the reason they put it in food is to excite your taste buds and to make you want to eat more of whatever it is that you're eating and obviously buy more. Um, so the other issue is that you can look at the labels to see if MSG is there, but because there's been such a bad rep given to MSG lately, there's been copious scientific reports done on their effects. So the food industry has started to be pretty creative about how it labels it on your food. So you may not even see it as straight out MSG, monosodium glutamate. You may see it as things like glutamate, um, calcium caseinate, yeast, um, plant protein, uh, glutamic acid, and we'll put up a list because there's tons more. So yeah, next time you go to the supermarkets, just go and check the, the label and the, the ingredients in this packet of crisps or any other of these foods that you love and nearly crave and you can't stop eating up until the packet is finished. And just check out if MSG or monosodium glutamate or any of the other name are in there. And that's probably why you love it so much. Yeah, I'll bet you'll find some. So what can we do about that? Firstly, get back to the advice we were giving earlier. If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Eat whole food as less transformed as possible. Secondly, if possible, avoid all food that are known to be GMOs. Like the problem of GMOs, other than they transform the DNA of those plants, is that they overspread because they resist to all those uh, phytochemicals. They, all those phytochemicals are in the plants and you are eating them and they destroy your gut. They destroy many things. So those, when we say those, they're sprayed, we mean by um, insecticides, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides. So all, those, all of those toxins that are there to kill any little bugs on the plants. Thirdly, get informed about the safer list. So just as there are a list of GMO foods to avoid, uh, there's a safer list where those plants are not as toxic as the others. If because they're strong enough to deal with nature and are not sprayed. Okay. And lastly, where possible, this is the easiest one of all, is to eat organic if you can. So there's lots of different ways now that this is coming in um, to cities and to towns. Um, you have lots of options in your supermarket. Um, there are organic co-ops. Um, there's even people in neighborhoods getting together to buy in bulk so that they can get reduced prices. Um, there's farmer, farmer's markets. And also, if you, if you aren't too far from the country, you can also look out for a farmer that you know 
may not be certified organic, but you know that he doesn't use chemicals. So check out your options and see what you can do to increase the amount of organic food that you eat. So we hope you find that helpful. Again, any stories or comments, put them below. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, have a fantastic week and see you soon. Bye.